crime. Moped gangs is something we've reported on many times. <laughs> In fix computers using Windows operating system. So reboot your router, the FBI says. Hey, the Russians hacked our election, the Russians hacked our election. And they... Security has some kind of gas. People are being pepper sprayed. Fired, additional shots fired. Guns. He had two guns, guns. yes, sir. <laughs> my school. Oh, oh, the Make it. Captain. We made it. Are you picking anything up on those scanners? Proximity alert, sir. Counting three vessels. Then why the hell aren't we moving? Are you captain? To the gate! Now! Unknown ship, heading right for us! Get us out of here. Engines with Max! Shields up! Invasive! Escape Online by Christopher Kerr Narrated by Stephanie Pollard Performed by Sarah E. Taylor Bob Barton Tony Benedetti Jamie Buck J.R. Bryden Interior, SCS Juno, Bridge, Day Commander Maplin, mid-fifties, sits in his chair, official rank denoted by the insignia on his uniform. He's humanoid, but not human, a proxer like all the crew on the bridge. Maplin presents as a fairly clean-cut example of the species. His face has a slight greenish wash to it, no tattoos, scars, or tribal markings. Clearly a military man, but the eyes fail to conceal his current situational boredom. To his left stands Lieutenant Peyton, late forties, just arrived. A proxer too, of course. A pinker skin tone, but similarly uniformed, rank denoted. Sir. Ah, Lieutenant. How goes the... operation? All good. Really? Good, you say? Maplin continues looking out over the Enterprise, despite addressing his lieutenant. Peyton seems to pay this light no mind. A figure of speech, sir. Sentry fighters report no sign of any trouble. Loading operations are on schedule and nearing completion. <sighs> Why are we here? Peyton stands respectfully, deferential, and silent. Why isn't the Federated Union Sector command ship, albeit with only a caretaker support crew, to oversee this? This... Pfft. Peyton takes a second before replying. A display of faction might, perhaps. The galaxy's citizens must feel we are able to defend them if we're to maintain our hard-won advantages, sir. I do not enjoy being a token, Lieutenant. A pawn on a game board, someone's political gesture, or facade. Yes, sir. And this rabble aren't our people? 
They are not beholden to the Federation banner or deserving of our protection. Of course, sir. I understand Wan Su Cole has... feels he has a certain obligation to the group. Past association. And you've seen the progress reports? Not the security arrangements, the yield, the Hyperium ore. Another pause from Peyton. Yes, sir. Maplin finally turns to Peyton as they speak. I've never taken you for a fool, soldier. Off the record? Off, as you say, the record. Maplin turns his attention back to the display. There really isn't sufficient untapped ore for operations here to remain viable. Indeed, I agree with your astute analysis of the situation, Lieutenant. A token. If I may, Commander, I have my orders. Your dedication to duty is commendable. Dismissed, Peyton nods and walks off. Interior, SCS Juno, Corridor, Day. Three male figures rush conspicuously, unnaturally, down the corridor. Out of place, despite their Encorp branded coveralls. Two proxers, Kieran, approximately 30, slightly androgynous, but otherwise the archetypal male hero. Mac, 25 going on 35, and the more squat, bulbous form of JG, an alien of indeterminate age. Both Mac and JG enjoy a yellow backlight to their ID tags. Mac's reading Mac Daddy 192 in full. In contrast, however, Kieran's moniker is set against a traffic light red background. Should be just up here, Captain. On the right. No, the left. Right. Definitely the right. They turn a corner, to the right, and come to an abrupt halt, a dead end. JG shrugs apologetically. Kieran returns a warm smile and places an encouraging arm on his shoulder. Mac gets the drop on them, checking his bearings in a flash, and retreats back the way they came. Kieran nods to JG and they follow, but Mac holds his lead by a pace or two. Are you sure this is a good idea? Kieran casually activates his wristband without breaking step or looking down to it. Hear that? Even our ever-intrepid JG thinks this is an unnecessary risk. Mac ejaculates over his shoulder. JG is a muppet, though. And yet here he is, covering your ass, risking his own, as we infiltrate a battlecruiser for what I'm not so sure anymore. Maybe you should think a bit more highly of him if we manage to get out of this alive. Wouldn't count on it. Don't be so pessimistic. We'd know all about it already if they detected us here. It's certainly an unexpected course of action. Glan does have that going in its favor. No, I meant about revising my opinion on Deke of the Week. Maybe we can cut the chatter, gents. They proceed a few more steps in silence, reprimanded. They turn a new corner. Interior, SCS Juno, Terminal, Continuous, Day. This little section of corridor ends at a computer terminal. JG has a point is all. If it's economy of scale, we've got nearly a full hauler's worth without this score. You know, the one suddenly under Encorp, lock and key. Business. Life itself is fundamentally risk. If I wanted to get drawn into the factional warfare, I'd just have enlisted, you know? You're failing to consider the long game here. There are certain potential advantages to our unexpected change of circumstances. You mean this mahusive big capital warship which wasn't supposed to be here? Yeah. Lucky us. You see an obstacle. I see an opportunity to expedite the organization's overall strategies. Multiple birds with one stone. Hmm. Mac arrives at the terminal, bringing the group to a halt again. He investigates it visually, click-clicking his tongue. He drops to his haunches. A second later, the clicking stops. Ah. He snap, snap, snaps his fingers towards JG without looking up. Interface, now! JG complies, fishing in his satchel for a device which he then hands across. Mac looks up just for long enough to receive the device. 
Kieran motions at Mac as if to prompt the expected thank you. Mac gives a snort and turns his attention back to interfacing the equipment together. Don't pay him any attention. Evidently, his mother didn't love him enough when he was a baby. I appreciate having you here. This cloak and dagger commando stuff is a little out of my comfort zone. You might be the best young pilot I've seen in a long time, Kieran. But you do lack a certain vision. What's the situation, Mac? If our captain had any real vision, perhaps his own organization would still be afloat instead of running things for you. Kieran throws Mac a hurt, dirty look. Mac connects the device to the terminal with a click. I'm in. Kieran groans and shakes his head. You're such a cliche. Mac turns to Kieran, flicking the latter's red backed name badge with a finger. And you're a dinosaur. Back to his task. The device starts to display a progress bar. K. I. S. S. There's a certain purity and elegance to simplicity, you know? Hmm. Doesn't that ever worry you, Cap? One bad day and you could lose everything? Mac half-heartedly chastises Kieran. Sing song. More focused on the terminal, truth be told. Single trace of your warp vector's all it would take. Yeah, someone tailing you. Agreed. It'd be pretty dumb to make unnecessary high-profile visits. Or even advertise the fact in hostile territory, for example. What about someone just stumbling onto it? Kieran laughs. A kind, gentle laugh. Space is big. Really big. The odds against are literally astronomical. Lots of room to squirrel the high importance things away for safekeeping. Doubtless safe from any and all forms of destruction. So just the Alpha Sector, really. Still, big enough. Old school. Ask him what the preventative measures are if someone does blunder across his stash, Jay. JG shrugs, a sign for Kieran to go on. The latter obliges, smiling. If one were to invest in such an approach? Combination lock. JG looks shocked. Mac laughs with no real humor. JG taps his own ID badge with its yellow background. We'll stick with Team Rough Rider, thanks. Each to their own, indicates the scene around them. Kind of the whole point, huh? Interior, SCS Juno, Bridge, Day. Peyton passes one of the outermost pods, strolling casually around in supervision, hands clasped behind his back. He stops, takes a step backwards. The occupant of the pod, leading hand Ezra, 25, notices. She turns her attention to Peyton with a deferential, quizzical look. Leading hand, what is that? Sir? On your display. We appear to have some irregular comms transmissions emanating from near the hangar bay. He comes over, pointing. Ezra reviews her work, tapping her controls, pulling up more detail. Yes, I... that could be possible, sir. Warrants Officer Kestri! Sir. Ezra continues to review her work, clearly distressed by the oversight. Kestri arrives, late twenties. No nonsense, the uniform failing to hide an obvious lethal intensity to her build. Of those seen on the bridge, only she has a weapon visible, a blaster holstered high on her hip. What do you make of this? Kestri regards the readouts. With dread, Ezra interrupts, pointing at a new file she's brought up. Corridor footage of Kieran, Mac, and, most conspicuously, the very alien shape of JG. Sirs? They glance at the new footage on her screen to Kestri, ignoring the more junior officer. Get a five-man team together and get down there, stat. Peyton storms off toward the commander's seat to inform him of the news. Kestri waits a fraction longer, shoots an angry glare at Ezra, then marches off in the other direction. Calm's hand to her mouth, the other on her holster. Interior, SCS Juno, terminal, day. Mac remains on haunches, face towards the terminal, his back to the others. J.G. hops nervously from foot to foot. Maybe head back a bit. Keep a lookout. J.G. nods, trundling off in compliance. Come on, Mac. How much longer? Mac reiterates his earlier humorless laugh. Mac? The laugh repeats, 
identical, detached. I think you're out of time, guys. Mac! Kieran shakes Mac's shoulder. Nothing rouses him. The laugh repeats. We've got ourselves a problem here, Chief. Interior SES Juno, bridge, day. Peyton is back by Commander Maplin's station. And uh, where precisely are our uninvited guests? Leading hand, Ezra, on screen. A sizable portion of the main display reacts to mirror Ezra's now. The initial corridor footage paused in one of the windows shared. In another, an interactive floor plan shows Kestri and five more security personnel clearly labeled. They're rapidly closing in on the first hostel marked, a corridor or so over from the two remaining by the terminal. They're cut off from the hangar now. No hope of an escape other than straight into the arms of our security team. Interior, SES Juno, corridor, day. JG hovers nervously by a doorway. After a moment, a decision is made. Tapping a panel, he closes the door, hiss, and lumbers off back to the others. Interior, SCS Juno, bridge, day. CCTV on the main display shows Kestri and her team arrive at the closed door. You assume, of course, escape is their goal. Maplin strokes his chin thoughtfully. On the monitor, Kestri looks straight into the CCTV lens and speaks again into her wrist. Intruders contained, sir. I concur with her young leading hand. Interior, SCS Juno, Terminal, Day. JG returns. The progress bar is still short of 100%, and Mac is still as if in a trance. Someone's coming. Let's get out of here. What's wrong with Mac? It's crucial that subroutine completes its upload. Do whatever you have to to make it happen. Interior, SCS Juno, Bridge, Day. Peyton regards his superior with expectation. Orders? Neutralize the intruders. Kestri looks to the lens again. We have zero chance of catching them off guard if we open this door. We lose the element of surprise and risk the lives of my men. My men, warrant officer. Maplin taps the blue of his ID badge. And they will therefore have the honor of being born again to die for the cause. Then you leave me no choice. Kestri pulls her blaster from its holster, aiming it directly towards the camera. I never liked working here anyway. She pulls the trigger, and the CCTV feed goes dead. Interior, SCS Juno, terminal, continuous, day. A single blaster shot sounds from the far end of the corridor, behind the sealed door. Kieran and JG react, each pulling blasters out from somewhere within their overalls. They try to take cover, prepare a defensive stand, and protect the catatonic Mac all at once, a fool's errand in the sparse corridor setting. A short series of screams, thuds, and gurgles follow the shot. Kieran gives a reassuring glance sideways to JG, then attention back to the far end of the corridor. The door slides open with a hiss. Smoke billows in. It's okay. It's me. Kestri? She emerges from the clearing smoke, smiling broadly, hands in the air for a moment. Then she motions to Mac. Nice to see you guys. What's wrong with the anorak this time? She moves towards Mac and the terminal. He's gone totally unresponsive. Kestri places a gentle hand on Kieran as she passes him. Hey, handsome. Figures. In pure coincidence, the progress bar completes with a ping 100%. Any particular reason why we're all standing about here like target practice? She yanks the device from the terminal, giving it a cursory examination, and holds it out to JG. He pops it back into his bag and goes to get Mac to his feet. Right. Kieran helps JG with Mac's frozen form. Kestri activates her own comm band, speaking towards it. There's a slight squeal of feedback. Kieran taps his own to cancel it. North, I've kind of blown my cover here. I can lately get the gang back to their ship and launch into space, but tell me you've got the cavalry coming? Karen knows the drill. Help him to the hangar, then follow his lead. With pleasure. To Kieran. Mind if I tag along? Seems only fitting. 
So what exactly was the plan here? Kieran throws an exasperated shrug. Nice little Hyperium smashing grab, North said. Little independent outfit, barely any defenses. Kestri points to the corridor of the battle cruiser they all now find themselves in. How'd that work out for you? Let's find out, shall we? Interior. SCS Juno, bridge, continuous, day. Maplin stands before his chair, regarding the display, mouth open, shocked. He glances around his crew, turning to Peyton for answers. Someone explain, what in the hell's just happened? Respectfully requesting authorization to cancel warrant Officer Kestry's clearances and status. Peyton barks a command off to his left. Petty Officer Gunter, revoke all access for former warrant Officer Kestry. Flag as enemy combatant. Pass it back up the chain to high command. Maplin gives Peyton a sad, worried look. Sir. Exterior, space, Howland 4, night. A shape starts to form from the emptiness, a gnosis decloaking. Well, hello there. The ship's multiple turrets track, aligning with their target, then looses a volley of missiles towards the Juno. Through the bridge view screen, the uncloaked ship can now be seen, missiles tearing away from it. Sir, privateer battleship uncloaked 32 clicks ahead. The missiles soar towards the unprepared Juno. Brace for impact! The missiles find their target, shaking the ship. Still being carried, Max starts to groggily come around. Cavalry? Close enough. That's our escort. Cavalry ought to be here in a second, though. How do we get off this sarcophagus again? Over here, quickly. Purple hyperspace signatures flicker five times in succession. Five new enemy contacts, destroyer class. Mount! Red alert, power to shields. Sentry commander, engage those ships. Klaxons blare. We got incoming! Damn it. 